From the ID point two comes the ID point Polo. It's parked back there and we'll explore what it can do. And with that, hey and welcome to this new video here with Jonas and welcome to the disguised unveiling of the VW ID Polo and the VW ID Polo GTI. VW is going back to its original names while keeping the ID labeling for the electric vehicles, which I think is a really smart move and reveals how the first two sane models will appear. Well, still a bit disguised, but you can already get a pretty solid sense of what they'll actually look like. And we'll do that together in this video. And just a quick heads up, there's a lot of exciting content coming up on the channel in the next few weeks. Many world premieres, many studies, many videos of world premieres events. And if you want to support my work, my effort in the coming weeks, then feel free to subscribe to the channel below the video for free. It helps me immensely. It doesn't cost you anything, but you'll always get the latest updates on electromobility. And today, surprisingly, we have the ID Point Polo. And even though the GTI is already parked next to it, we'll start with that one first. Next year, in the spring, it's supposed to arrive in the production version. And I was told that the car hidden underneath here is actually the production model. So not um, just another concept that was wrapped up to show, hey, it's really coming soon. No, that's the car. But we'll also take a look at the interior images that Volkswagen released back then after the first concept study, where there were one or two journalists who were able to check it out. So I think you already get a pretty good idea of how this car will actually turn out. This includes a front that is distinctly different from everything you currently see across the entire range of the ID family models. So there are a few nods, for example, here with this upward curving air vent on the side. There's a vent like this, for example, in the facelifted ID.3, which I think is really cool. I'm curious to see how this will be implemented, for instance, in a facelift version of the ID.4. For now, you can still clearly see this mix between the combustion engine Polo and an ID.3, I'd say. While the concept went a bit further, this design here is really somewhere in between. You can see the light strip that runs through here, the intentionally illuminated VW logo, just to clarify, it's not standard. It'll have the regular VW logo. The optional light strip with the illuminated VW logo is really cool, in my opinion. The front also looks really stubby. And down here, you can clearly see that a bar will run across the bottom. And that, as Andy Mind, the lead designer, just told me, will also be the distinguishing feature. Because while it's probably going to be silver in the regular ID Polo, just like it was in the concept, here in the GTI, it's going to lean more toward a darker tone. And I think it's really cool because it's so distinctive when you see this whole band here. You can clearly see underneath, it's not just a single flat color, but there's also a bit of texture and subtle detail that really adds depth and character to the whole thing. Let's see where this leads, but that's not the only distinguishing feature. You can also clearly notice the front LEDs positioned right here. The daytime running lights on the GTI are significantly different and I find it really cool because here it's elevated right where the air intake is on the regular model. That's also a bit of a nod to the current ID models, where you had first a diamond shape, then a triangular design, but also slightly vertically oriented. And then, of course, a completely different front bumper, which looks really cool here with these still foiled elements and adds a sleek modern touch. And of course, with a GTI, honeycomb patterns can't be missing. Since the ID Polo is a front wheel drive vehicle with all its technology located under the front hood, there's also no radio system integrated here. A bit of space is left here, maybe an SUV will come at some point, or perhaps something can still be changed, but for now, it's really just technology under the front hood. I can't open it, of course, it's not the production standard underneath yet, but I find it really exciting to see because Volkswagen says the GTI comes with an electronically controlled locking differential in the front, and I was able to test that recently in the Fiat Abarth 600, and I was really surprised by how much fun such a front-wheel drive electric car with a sporty setup can be. And I can imagine this one performing quite similarly. The base model packs over 200 horsepower. Perhaps we'll hit the 300 mark here. Let's continue with the side and the design. On one hand, you can clearly see both in profile through the shadows and directly from the front and the back in the frontal view that the vehicle has quite flared fenders, typical for a model positioned in this class today, a compact electric car. They are mostly focused on functionality. Here you can see that they dared to venture into design as well because this element here stands relatively high, which means you get a very flat surface here, but it also creates a certain contrast naturally. To visually push this cheek outward, plus the charging flap is then on the right side. 
Many will comment, yeah, in the garage that could be pretty tricky. I know, but this is mainly on the German or European market. It's very interesting, especially if you're a street parker, which is likely the case for many with a compact electric car, who can then quite easily pull the cable from here to the charging station here, or even if they're parked here and the charging station is at the back of the car, they can still lay it down relatively compactly without having to go all the way around the car. You'll notice I'm intentionally jumping back and forth between the two models. A lot is similar, but I'm also naturally pointing out the differences. What's the same is the door opening mechanism. It's on the C-pillar right here, which we already know from some electric cars, but I think it's very, very cool behavior. We recently saw it in our test of the Renault 5, which will be a direct competitor to this one. And I found it very practical in everyday use. I'm naturally curious to see how the interior will look, how the design evolves and how it actually turns out in the production model, but we'll have to wait a bit longer for that. And as I mentioned earlier, if you subscribe to the channel, you won't miss it. One advantage of this door opening mechanism is that the design can extend down here, but also the wheel arch is slightly flared, similar to the front here. In the lower section, you can notice a subtle change in the sill design. There, you can spot the GTI logo, inset as a design element at the bottom. And it's obviously a camouflage wrap, but I think from certain angles, you can already see quite well how it extends toward the back. This also includes the rear, under which 490 liters of trunk space are supposedly hidden. At least that's what they said back then when they presented the first concept. And if that actually happens, it would be a statement. Because in this compact segment, it's really a challenge to get a lot of space in there. With the Puma Gen E, we saw that while you can load a lot downwards in electric cars, meaning if you really lay this tray almost all the way down, but if the depth doesn't fit, you still lose practical storage space in everyday life because not everyone is always transporting long items that can be loaded downwards. But usually it's more like you mainly utilize the trunk's depth. I'm really curious to see how Volkswagen approaches that. Here, the C-pillar is still relatively long, which suggests that there will be space underneath, but for now, I can't judge that. However, you can see that the trunk lid opens quite high up, and beneath it, we have a completely flat area where the license plate is concealed. Of course, you can also clearly see the rear light panel here, which has become a bit narrower compared to the first concept. Back then, it was more like a large bar, but now we have an illuminated VW logo, and on the outside, you can notice a rectangular shape. The elements placed side by side should visually match in depth just like in the concept study though I can't confirm for certain. Just guessing but the design of the light strip would allow it. Then again even more happens specifically with the GTI. For one there's a lower spoiler up here that extends even further underneath the third brake light enhancing the rear with a subtle ducktail design effect. It's not overdone but it does curve up slightly. It pulls the roofline downward giving it a sportier appearance but especially the diffuser. VW really nailed what they've put together here. If it hits production, like we've been saying, since it's the production car, then the GTI, I think, might just win over a few Polo GTI drivers. Or what do you think? Feel free to drop it in the comments. And with that, we move on to the interior and the concept images that were released in 2023. Because yes, that was the year when the ID2 all was talked about for the first time. The interior design is noticeably cleaner. Back then, with more of a retro touch, I asked Andy Mint, the head designer, in which direction it was headed. And he said, it's becoming cleaner and you can take clear inspiration from the ID Cross concept. I can already show it to you on Sunday. So it's definitely worth subscribing to the channel here so you don't miss it and can get a detailed look at how everything fits together in the ID Polo. It takes cues from that original concept, but it's been given a fresh and modern update to it. What's important here, as you can clearly see, physical buttons are making a comeback. The controls on the steering wheel are similar to what we currently have. And you're getting classic buttons again. We've already seen this with the Tigan. And in some other new VW models, this feature is now also making its way into the Polo and Polo GTI. Gimmicks like the compartment under the rear seat instead of a spare tire unfortunately won't make it into the production model. Too bad, actually, because even though it's something, you know, from many American models, I think it would have been really exciting, especially in the compact car segment. And after the overview of the interior, I'd now really, really love to share even more details with you. For example, the final price, the basic features or anything else like that. What you can still find out about battery sizes, realistic range or actual performance data. All that's not available yet. What was promised back then was 20 minutes from 10 to 80%. It was speculated to have a battery of over 50 kilowatt hours in the higher variant, likely around 30 in the base model. All of that will actually reveal itself. It will indeed have to compete with the Renault 5, as mentioned earlier, or also, for example, with Chinese competitors like the BYD Dolphin Surf. 
or the Ato 2, which slots right in between. I'm genuinely curious to hear your thoughts on it. I think it looks really cool. I'm happy that I could show it to you here in its series version, which was also a bit of a surprise for me. And I can hardly wait to see it undone. If you feel the same, you can subscribe to the channel down below. And up here you can see my video back then from the first world premiere.